Hey everyone, welcome to Elementary Math with Mr. Scott, and today we're going to tackle the three big words. Yep, the ones that tend to really get kids all uh, confused and not knowing what they are. And uh, again, it, they're not that difficult, but I'm going to go through each and every one of them to, to help them understand what they are. And those three words are the properties, the commutative property, the associative property, and the distributive property. So what do we do? Well, the commutative property, and again, this works for adding as well as multiplying, just states this, that three times four equals 12 is the same as saying four times three equals 12. Okay, basically it just doesn't matter which way they're done. You could do the three first or you could do the four first. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer. That's what commutative property says. So we use this community property all the time because sometimes like if we're trying to figure out a math fact, um, you know, we might want to work with the four or the three. It just makes it easier it doesn't matter which one um, as long as I know one of them I know both of them if that makes sense okay now the associative property that is a a little different it just says that it doesn't matter um, which ones you do first you're still going to get the same answer right so in this case and again I'm not going to put I'm just going to do the exact same thing okay this one requires parentheses okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put um, let's just put red ones in so if I multiply the 3 and the 4 first then the 5 I'm gonna get the same answer if I multiply the 4 and the 5 first, because remember, whatever we do in parentheses has to be done first. So if I multiply the 4 and the 5 first, okay, then the 3, I'm going to get the same answer as if I multiply the 3 and the 4, and then I multiply the 5. Doesn't matter. Either way, I'm coming up with 60, right? Because 3 times 4 is 12. 12 times 5 is 60. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. Either way, I'm going to be getting the same answer. So the associative property has to deal with parentheses and deciding which pair of numbers I am going to multiply first, which digits I'm going to use. Okay. Now the distributive property we've talked about quite a bit, where we break a number down, multiply the parts, and then add it back together. And again, uh, we use that here uh, when we we did our multiplication, right? So if I'm going to uh, let's just go ahead and and make one really super fast here. Again, if I'm going to multiply, let's say five times twenty-three, right? I take the three and I move the three up here. And then I turn the 2 into a 20, right, using my expanded form. Okay, and then I have my 5 down here. So what we're doing here is we're breaking this apart. I'm, I'm multiplying the 5 times the 3, and then I'm going to be multiplying the 5 times the 20, right? In essence, that's what I'm doing. 5 times 20 is 100. Okay, and 100, or 5 times 3 is 15, and then I add them together, and I get 115. That's my final answer, okay? So, again, distributive property, again, as I break it apart, I do something to the parts and then add it back together. Um, associative property deals with parentheses, which a pair of digits am I going to uh, multiply, it doesn't matter. Uh, I could use adding, same thing with the associative property. I could be adding those numbers instead of multiplying, same thing. Commutative property, it doesn't matter if I go 3 times 4 or 4 times 3. 
Same thing with adding. If I do 2 plus 1 is 3, or 1 plus 2, it's still 3. So that's the... Uh, the rundown on what the commutative property means, what the associative property means, and what the distributive property means. I hope that helps you and uh, makes it a lot easier for you to understand. As always, math can be fun.